before the Bugatti name was resurrected with the Veyron, the real Bugatti, founded in 1904 by Italian Ettore Bugatti, made the most elegantly engineered race cars in the world. The fastest too, the Type 35 was their most successful model and the Type 35B was the ultimate variant. Powered by a 2.3 litre overhead cam straight A engine with three valves per cylinder and a roots type supercharger, it won dozens of Grand Prix and endurance races. But this isn't a real Type 35B. It's built by Persang in Argentina and it's an exact replica down to the finest detail. Virtually every part is interchangeable. Same engine, although due to a changed firing order and plane bearing crank, it's producing more like 180 horsepower today. Same four speed box, same leaf springs, same wheels and cable operated brakes, and all handmade in the traditional ways. And you can buy one for around $250,000 and drive it around California or the Amalfi Coast or wherever. But California is a good enough place to start. If you can run me through it, the basics, that'd be awesome. Everything is manual. You're part of the machine. And so this is a very analog experience. It's kind of like flying a small airplane. Okay. Having to do all your pre-flight checks and all your things like that. Is this simple for a pre-war car to start? It's all new world to me, but it, it's not. If you basic. take pre-war cars as a whole, I think this car is pretty forgiving. But it's still archaic by the standards of other cars that would be pre-war, but you know, into the 1930s, mid-30s and so yeah. forth. A lot I, is manual. Okay, so once I've got it running, what about tips for driving it? What do I expect? The pedals are all in the right place, I'm pleased about. No mm, central throttle. Yes, one thing to be aware of is that the pedals are very close together, as you can see. Yeah. And the way you get around that is the clutch pedal is intentionally very low and the brake pedal is very tall. Yeah. So you stagger your feet okay. height-wise. Okay. So, um, something just to be aware of is that the steering is quite heavy. Yeah. Um, as far as power steering, that's your upper body. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to be a good start. And the gearbox is... It's age pattern. It's age pattern upside down. So okay. uh, first is in and down. Okay. Second is straight forward. Crossover and down is third. third. And then straight forward from third is fourth gear, which is also direct hookup. So you're actually not spinning any gears when it's in fourth. It's just going straight through the gearbox. Okay. Do I bully the shift or am I, am I gentle with it? What, what's the tip? This is one of the pre-war cars that you don't really have to bully. It's gentle, not gentle as in delicate, like you can break it, but it's very precise. It's like a Swiss watch. And so you'll start to get a feel for the revs. You'll get a, a feeling of understanding that at a certain gear whine frequency, you're at a certain speed where you can just pop it in. Yeah. That'll take practice, but you'll get to sort of memorize feels and noises that'll be your cues for when you're going to shift. Okay. Um, it's a proper relationship. It is. It's th There's definitely an organic relationship here. Okay, I don't want to abuse it. I just want to get in tune with it. So I guess it takes a bit of time. It just takes practice. Yeah. You just got to jump in. Okay, let's try. Okay, so I have pretty much zero point of reference with this car. So all I can do is describe what it's like to drive. And I guess drive is really the operative word because you have to drive to start. You cannot stop on the train for even seconds. Otherwise it makes you feel positive. <laughs> it's just a wild thing. Okay, I'm going to talk about each part individually. The first thing when I started driving it, the steering, I wouldn't call it vague, in fact it's really precise once you get used to it, but initially it's just weaving over the road, you have to get used to that, the key is not actually to correct it, let it do a little bit of a wonder, because it's actually quite a stable thing to drive, you just have to be aware of that. When you've got it loaded into the tread, just a couple of degrees, really, really weights up. Quite physical, but not overly, overly heavy. It doesn't feel like you have to beat it up, like you have to bully it. You just have to be assertive to get the thing to turn. When you do, you need the information back through it. The whole car is alive with this information. I can see these little chains in the cabin moving when I press 
Oh, my God. 